Welcome back, Egyptology lovers. Today we're going to discuss the statue of King Hormheb, who was the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, and Queen Mutnagemet. So that's Hormheb right here. He's destroyed, unfortunately, through the years. Uh, you know, just wear and tear, so on and so forth, and whatever damage that was done through the centuries. And there's his wife, who's, recent, who's pretty decently preserved. So basically, this is located at the Turin Museum in Italy. I'm just going to do a bit of a description of the statue, and then we're going to tackle the hieroglyphs on the back. Playing the role of Hathor, protecting the sun god, Queen Mutnebjeb, so Mutnebjemet, embraces her husband, Hormheb. Now, despite its high quality, the statue remained unfinished. Several details are missing, including the stripes of the royal kilt, so the, where the kilts are, the stripes that go there, they're missing, the carvings. And Nemes headdress, so that's broken off as well. The wings of the vultures in the queen's headdress, right over here, and the lower part of the bound enemies depicted on one side of the throne, which is not seen here. On the back of the statue, a long inscription records the coronation of Horemheb, who was a general of Tutankhamun before ascending the throne. So here is the translation, which I've done already. I've divided the text. It goes from right to left, and it works all the way down. So this is his coronation. This is when he became pharaoh. And Horemheb is very well known for being a commoner. This statue weighs, uh, measures about 139 by 86 by 92 centimeters. It is made of very hard stone called granodiorite. It dates to about 1319 to 1292 BC. This is New Kingdom, 18 dynasty. It was located at Thebes and Karnak at the Temple of Amun. And that's that. So we're going to go ahead now and tackle the, uh, the hieroglyphs on the back over here. I'm going to expand on that. We're going to adjust the camera so it fits it perfectly right there. And there it is. And what we're going to do is zoom in. So we're not going to just do it from here. We'll zoom in and we'll do the division of the text, which I've done. And we're going to go ahead and read it. Stay tuned. All right. So now we're going to do the translation of the Stella. It's going to start right over here on the right side. And it's going to move towards the left. So what's broken off, we're not going to read. You might hear the sentence be a little choppy. So over here it says, satisfied with... Truth. Now, this is uh, one of the titles for the two sisters, which is broken off. So this entire section would have the five royal titles. So it's satisfied with truth, fostering the two lands. Then we get the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, the lord of the two lands. And then we get the royal name of the pharaoh throne name, which is Jesser Keperure Setep Enre, which means my uh, sacred are the manifestations of Ra, chosen of Ra. Then we get the personal name, which is the son of Re, Sare, Lord of Appearances. And then this is Horemheb's personal name, which is Hor N M Heb. So Horus is in festival, beloved of Amun. And then we come over to here, which continues uh, with extra titles that says Horus, Lord of the Divine Palace, or Hennis, and that's broken off over there. All right, now we're going to go over to the second row. It says here, now this is kind of broken, so we'll just move over to what we can read. Amun, king of the gods that nursed him, so nursed him, Horus, son of Isis, his guardianship, was a talisman of his flesh. Having gone forth, he going forth, so this is past tense here, he going forth from the body and clad in majesty, the aspect of the God upon him, and then here it says, he made, and the rest is broken off. Continuing over here now, it says, bowed onto him the arm of youth, kissing the ground by the tall, or being the great, and the small, attended to him, 
the food of abundance while a child with none of his understanding. On the fourth line now, the courtiers of the entire people, the form of a God being his aspect, so these two are together, aspect, in the sight of him who beheld the image or his image of dread, dread or fear. So his image of dread. His father Horus, he placed him behind him, creating him for making his protection from one generation upon another. Okay, now going down to the fifth line, it says, For he knew the day of his pleasure for giving to him his kingship. Lo, this God, upon it distinguishing his son by or in before the land of the people. He desired to enlarge his gate until should come the day for his receiving of office or his office. His causing, going down to the sixth now, and his time. Now that's broken off, so we just have his time. And the heart of the king, or the heart of the king, being content with his dealings and rejoicing at his choice. He set him to be supreme chief upon the land in order to steer the laws of the two lands as hereditary prince of this entire land. He was unique without his second, so no equal. The plans, which we assume is his plans, but if we go down to the next row, is broken off. This here is the word people, but it's broken off. And it continues as, upon the utterance of his mouth. So if Horm had spoke, then the utterance of his mouth pleased the people. And he being summoned at the presence of the sovereign of the palace, falling into rage when he opened his mouth. And he answered, which goes over here, answered the king. And appeased, or he appeased him with the utterance, goes over here, utterance, of his mouth alone efficient and without and the rest is broken off down here without we'll continue here all his plans so his plans were at the gate of the ibis or jehuti and his conduct in the form of the lord of hasret or hasro Rejoicing at truth, like the beaky one, or in this case, it's referring to Thoth. Delighting over her, like Ta, when he awoke in the morning. That he might make presentation underneath her. She being placed, and it's cut off down here. So we'll go from there. His dealings treading upon her paths. 
as she, she shall make his protection upon the earth for the length of eternity or infinity. Now, in this section, we talk about Horemheb. Now, acting him as vice regent of the two lands over a period of many years, reported, and it's broken off down here, so we're just going to start right down here. The counselors in obedience at the gates of the king's house approaching him the great ones of the nine bows so the enemies of egypt from the south likewise from the north their arms outstretched at his encounter these are together encounter and they paid honor to his face like a god and all that was done was done under his command. The word his is missing, which should be down here. So now we're just going to scroll it up a little bit so we can see the rest of the text. His tread, his majesty being great in the sight of the people one praying for him the prosperity and health, and he is assuredly the father of the two regions or the two lands. And by the precious understanding of the gifts of a God to bring to the ports. So bringing to the ports. Continuing down here, now it's broken off, but we can assume from other texts it says somewhere around here. Now when many days had passed of these, the eldest son of Horus, being supreme or being supreme chief as hereditary prince of this entire land, and behold, or lo, this noble god, Horus of Hennes, or the king's palace, his heart desired to establish his son upon his eternal throne. And he commanded, the word he is missing, which comes down here, so we're missing some text here, but we can proceed from here now, with the word Amun over here, or the name of Amun. And then proceeded Horus for rejoicing, or amid rejoicing, to Thebes, or the city of Waset, which is the city of the Lord of Eternity, his son in his embrace, to Ipetsut, which is referring to Karnak, for in order to induct him in the presence of Amun, and for handing over for him his office of kingship, and for making of this period. Now we get the text O or Lo, and it's an interjection, like basically O Lord or so on and so forth. And then we're going to proceed to the next line down here, which is broken. In his beautiful festival, which is foremost of Ipet Rasut. This is now Luxor, so they moved on to Luxor. Then seeing by him, the majesty of this God, who is Horus, Lord of Genes, or the Lord of the temple of the king, or the divine temple, his son with him in the king's induction, so induction to being a king, in order to give to him his office, of his throne. And lo, or behold, Amun-Ra rejoiced in jubilation or gladness when he saw, now we go down here, it's a little broken off, 
on the day of him making his submission or submission, then he betook himself to this noble hereditary prince and chieftain, so amidst or among the two lands. And then we have the name of Horemheb, which is now not a king yet, but just a common person. And he's put his name in a royal cartouche. So it's Horemheb. So this means Horus is in festival. And this is a determinative referring to him as just a person. Then he proceeded to the king's house. Then he placed him before or in front of it to the Perwar, which means the great house. This goes all together, the great house. Of his noble daughter, which is great. Great. Now, great of magic is what we know it is, but it's broken off right over here. So this refers to Isis. In welcoming, so in welcoming attitude. So this is uh, the word for welcoming. And she embraced his beauty and established herself on his forehead with the gods of the Aeneid or the nine gods and the lords of Per Neser were in exaltation of his rising. And now we're going to name the gods who were there in the presence which is Nechbet and Wajet, the uh, protectresses of Upper and Lower Egypt, the Vulture and the Cobra, Neith, the ancient goddess of war, Isis, Nephthys, Horus, and Seth. As you can see, Osiris is missing because he is the god of the underworld. The entire Aeneid, so the entire nine gods as well, or other gods, presided before or in front of the great seat, the great seat meaning the seat of the throne of the king. We're just going to move this over so we can get most of the text. I'm going to squeeze it down a little bit so it's in frame. Like that. All right, now going down here, which is broken off, but we have here thankful clamor, I guess. Thankful clamor to the height of the sky and rejoicing at the contentment of Amun. Behold, lo, Amun has come, and his son is in front, these two are together, in front of him, to the palace in order to establish his crown upon his, so upon his head, in order to prolong his period like himself. We have gathered to establish, this is together, establish we of him, and going down here now, to assign to him the insignia of Ray. So we pay honor, that goes with this, honor, to Amun on his account. You have brought to us our Savior. Give to him the jubilees or the festivals of Re and the years of Horus as king. Being the one which he will do that your heart will please. Within Ipetsut, which is Karnak, and likewise in Yunu, which is Heliopolis, and Ukapta, which is Memphis. For being the one, he will enrich them. Now we're going to go down to the next line down here. We're going to start right here. Now there was made a great name. So this is very interesting. You have a cartouche here, meaning that the great referring to the divine name of a royal king. They put a cartouche with the word name. So they've combined it to say that the pharaoh will inevitably be inaugurated as a king. Of this good God and his tutelary or inscriptional name, like the majesty of Ray, 
So now we're going to have the titles of uh, the five names of Horemhab, which is first the Horus name, the Mighty of Bull, Ready in Plans, and then we have the two goddesses, Nethbet and Wajet, the protectresses of Egypt, or the Nepti name. Here it means Great of Marvels in Ipet in Ipet Sut, which refers to Karnak. And then we have the third name, the Golden Horus, Satisfied with Truth, and then Fearing. or excuse me, fostering the two lands. And then we get the two last names of a pharaoh, which we see very commonly, the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, the Nusut Biti, and then his throne name, which will be Jese Keper Rure Setep Enre, which means is the sacred are the manifestations of Ra, chosen of Ra, and then the final name is the son of Re, which is Horem, or hor en -em heb which means Horus is in festival, and then Mariamun, beloved of Amun, and then the final one is given life. Continuing here, going forth, behind, continuing down here in the next row, of the day, in the king's house, by the majesty of this noble god, Amun, who is king of the gods. His son, in front of him, referring to Horemheb, he embraces his beauty and being risen in the Kepresh crown. The Kepresh crown is known as the blue crown or the war crown. Handing over to him, which the sun desk encircles, the nine bows being under his feet, so these are together here, feet, and the sky being in festival, and the earth being under joy, or with joy, as well as the Aeneid, or the nine gods, the Pesachet, of Tamari. Now this is a third type of name of ancient Egypt. Uh, this means the beautiful land. And their hearts were glad or happy. All right, continuing down here. Behold, the entire people were in joy, and they cried aloud to the upper sky. The great and the small, they seized upon gladness, and the entire or the whole earth rejoiced. Now, when being ended, this festival, which is foremost of Ipet Rusut, which refers to uh, Luxor, Ipet Rusut, and Amun, king of the gods, having returned in peace to, going back here, Thebes or Waset, while faring upstream by his majesty, and then faring downstream with the statue of Horakti, and lo, him, ordering, or making order, he set forth, of this land, this land, and setting it, so setting it himself in the manner or the like of Ray. He renewed the temples of the gods and the marshes of the delta to Tosseti, so from the delta to Tosseti, which is in the south, and he fashioned their images, but down here, if you go to the next row, it says all their images, which we go back to the top line. So it's all their images. Distinguished above the originals and surpassing in beauty in what he did before them. And Ray rejoiced when he saw them and found ruined in former times. He raised up their fanes, these are together, and he created their statues in 
their exact person or exact image and of every or all expensive or costly or precious stone. All right, we're just gonna pull up uh, to the very bottom here. So we have the bottom nice and visible. Continuing to the next row. He searched or sought out the precincts of the gods, which were in ruins in this land. And he set order them, being the precincts, like they were since the time of primordial, so primordial time. And firstly, he instituted for them regular offerings every day. And every vessel, these are together, of their fans or their temple areas, go down here now, their temple, so this is the word there and the temples is above in the previous row, fashioned with silver and gold. And he equipped them with the purifying priests and the lector priests who do the reading from the chosen of the personal army. He opened up for them fields and herds or cattle and equipped with all services. And they raising up early, referring to the uh, army, to pay honor to Ray in the beginning of the morning. And that comes down here, which is the continuation of morning every day. Now the people speak, may you lengthen for us the kingship of your son who does what pleases or makes glad in your heart. Then we have the name or the throne name of the Pharaoh, which is Jesser Keper Rure Setep Enre, which is sacred are the manifestations of Ra, chosen of Ra. And may you give to him millions in or of festivals or jubilations. And may you give his victories all over the land or over all the lands like Horus, the son of Isis, even when he propitiates your heart in Yunu or Heliopolis and may join you your Aeneid or the nine gods of the Aeneid. All right, that is the end of this Stella. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, leave in the questions or comments. But this is the Stella of Horemheb of the uh, late 18 dynasty. And this is his coronation Stella, like I did for the establishing coronation of Tutankhamun before. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and share as well. And let your friends know. Take care.